Welcome to my presentation on nonlinear spatial filtering for multi-channel speech enhancement in inhomogeneous noise fields. My name is Christina Tesch and I'm presenting work that was done together with Timo Gerkman at the Signal Processing Group at the University of Hamburg. For multi-channel speech enhancement, this can be seen as state-of-the-art, combining a linear spatial filter with a spectral post filter. In the recent past, we've seen that deep neural networks are employed very successfully for single-channel speech enhancement. In general, DNNs are able to learn arbitrarily complex nonlinear functions. But it is not clear if it is worth the effort training a neural network to replace this traditional architecture with something that looks like this. In fact, today, multi-channel speech enhancement architectures that are based on DNNs often retain the separation into spatial and spectral filter and restrict the architecture such that the learned spatial filter is linear. Others propose to use the DNNs just for estimating the parameters of a spatial filter and for post-filtering. We show that for an inhomogeneous noise field, a nonlinear spatial filter yields improved results. And this could motivate to train DNNs to learn nonlinear spatial filters for improved speech enhancement. The general research questions that this talk is concerned with are could we achieve better results with nonlinear spatial filters? And by nonlinear spatial filter, I now mean a filter that joins this spatial and spectral processing and is nonlinear. And for which noise scenarios would this be the case? Let me clarify some notation. The DFT coefficient of the clean speech signal is denoted with S, and D refers to the steering vector, which accounts for the propagation path between the speech source and the microphones. The vector of DFT coefficients of the noise signal is denoted with n, and we assume that these signals add up to the noisy observation y. A common choice for the spatial filter is the minimum variance distortionless response beamformer. The formula is given down here and phi denotes the noise correlation matrix. From this formula it is apparent that the beamformer is linear in the input y. The separation into a spatial and a spectral filter has many advantages, for example, when estimating the parameters of the filters. And one can even show that it is optimal in the minimum mean squared error sense if the noise is following a multivariate complex Gaussian distribution. But it is not generally optimal for noise that is following a non-Gaussian distribution. Then the filter may look like this. Let's see an example. This is a result by Richard Hendricks et al. And the distribution assumption is that the noise follows a multivariate complex Gaussian mixture distribution. And we can see the formula here. We have m Gaussian components that are joined into one mixture distribution, and each of the components has a weighting factor Cm, and is zero mean, and has a correlation matrix phi m. The result they obtain looks like this. Pay attention to the occurrences of the input y in this formula. First of all, in many cases it occurs as input to this NVIDIA beamformer-like structure that you can see down here, but it is not the NVIDIA beamformer, because this phi m is not the correlation matrix of the overall distribution, but the correlation matrix of one Gaussian component, the m Gaussian component. This structure occurs here, and also here and here, these mn and md are related to the confluent hypergeometric function and details have been left out to simplify this a little bit. And furthermore, we see that y is part of this quadratic structure here and also in the denominator. So it occurs uh, in a nonlinear fission in this function. And because of this, 
dependence on this noise correlation matrix of the specific components and the sum that we find here in the beginning, um, we can conclude that it cannot be decomposed into a linear spatial filter and a post filter, but that it looks like this. It joins the spatial and spectral processing to just one operation. We are interested in the potential benefit that we can obtain with such a nonlinear spatial filter like the GMSE derived by Richard Hendricks. And for this reason, in our analysis, we compare it to a separated setup. We call it MVDR MMSE. And it combines an MVDR beamformer with a post filter that has been derived under the same distribution assumptions as the filter derived by Richard Hendricks. Our previous work showed that a nonlinear spatial filter can be beneficial if the noise is following a much more heavy tail distribution than a Gaussian distribution. For this, we experimented with heavy tailed Gaussian mixture distributions obtained from scaled components, and we will also use this in our current experiments. The illustration here is for the single channel case. To obtain a Gaussian mixture distribution with heavy tailed characteristics, we combine Gaussian components with different variances, such that the overall mixture distribution has a, a variance of one. And when comparing the Gaussian mixture distribution with the Gaussian distribution that has also variance one, we see that it has much longer tails. We measure the heavy tailedness of the distribution with the multivariate kurtosis in the multivariate case. And in the multivariate case, we are obtaining the heavy tailed Gaussian mixture by applying the same principle and scaling the correlation matrix to obtain the correlation matrices of the individual components. I call this B the scaling factor and R is just a normalization such that the resulting mixture distribution has a correlation matrix phi that is not changed. This slide shows the experiment set up for noise that is modeling an inhomogeneous noise field. Again, we assume that the noise is following a Gaussian mixture distribution with M components. The Gaussian components of the mixture distribution model two noise point sources, N1 and N2, and the correlation matrices for the components modeling each of the sources is obtained from the outer product of the steering vector pointing into the direction of the source and then adding a regularization term such that the correlation matrix is invertible. I hope to clarify the setup with this graphic. We have two microphones in the middle and a target source placed in broadside direction. And then we use the components of the Gaussian mixture distribution to model point sources, for example, in this direction, and this uh, stays fixed, and also in a second position. Modeling two sources with one Gaussian mixture distribution corresponds to the assumption that the sources are non-Gaussian or that they are sparse. Speech sources are commonly assumed to be non-Gaussian, and also the sparsity assumption is widely used for speech separation. Here we compare the performance results of the nonlinear spatial filter and the separated setup. Our first test case is a Gaussian mixture distribution with two components. Each of the components models one noise point source. One of the point sources is fixed in this position and the other one takes positions that are indicated by the colored boxes on this circle. The x-axis of the two graphs show the phase distance of the two noise sources, and the color in the graph matches with the color in this picture and indicates the setting that was tested. The job graph here shows the difference in segmental SNR improvement that the two estimators achieve for the different configurations. 
If both noise point sources are placed in the same direction, then we can see that the nonlinear spatial filter does not have an advantage over the separated setup. And this can be expected because in this specific case, the Gaussian mixture distribution reduces to a Gaussian distribution. From this bottom curve here, we infer that the performance gain of a nonlinear spatial filter over the separated setup is related to the spatial structure of the sound field, because as we vary the position of the second noise source, we see that the performance gain uh, changes from 0 dB up to 1 dB. Our previous work showed that the advantage of a nonlinear spatial filter increased when the noise distribution had an increased cortosis. The second plot here shows the cortosis factor of the noise distribution. The cortosis factor is the multivariate cortosis normalized by the cortosis of the Gaussian distribution with the corresponding dimensionality. The cortosis of the Gaussian distribution is 1, and for the other configurations we, th we see that the cortosis is quite constant and very close to 1. And from this we infer that the performance differences that we observe in this graph are really related to the spatial structure of the noise distribution and not its heavy tailedness. In our other test cases, we use a Gaussian mixture distribution with six components, and then three scaled Gaussian components are used to model each of the point sources. As expected, the cortosis rises as we increase the scaling factor, but actually it does not rise to very high levels when comparing with our previous work, and we see that it is rather constant. We cannot infer the performance advantage of the nonlinear spatial filter over the separated setup from this cortosis graph. As we can see here, for example, the nonlinear spatial filter has an advantage of about 2 dB over the separated setup, and here it is only 1.3 dB, but the cortosis is very similar. For this reason, we conclude that besides the heavy tailedness of the noise distribution, also the spatial structure is of importance. This is now the conclusion. The traditional concatenation of linear beamforming and spectral post filtering is not generally optimal for noise that is not following a Gaussian distribution. We saw that the potential performance gain achieved by a nonlinear spatial filter depends on the properties of the noise distribution. And we showed that besides the heavy tailedness, also the spatial structure of the noise distribution plays an important role. One can imagine that realistic noise scenarios are spatially quite diverse, and as a result that it might make sense to move from this kind of architecture to such an architecture and to use DNNs for multi-channel speech enhancement. Thanks for watching our presentation on nonlinear spatial filtering. We are happy to take any questions and discuss this topic further with you in this virtual conference.